Welcome back, ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls. This is Subble BC here, yet again, doing another video episode of Growing for Freedom. And in this quick little video we're going to do, just going to update everyone as to what's been going on over here in our kryptonite-based tube tent. And for all of you guys that have not been keeping up with current events, uh, this is essentially is an 8x4 tent, generic brand. I don't even know what brand it is at all, to be honest. But uh, yeah, we got four 600-watt lights illuminating this area. Uh, we're using the Hydro Farm 6-inch cool tubes and each one of those is being powered by the Cap Extreme Nano and really great ballast system and really the preferred way I think to run tents just because you know the combination of these uh, cool tubes as well as the Extreme Nano there's very little you know weight and that's really important with the framework of these tents and uh, this one does not have the greatest framework design and there are some that are a lot more rugged than others but in any case if you are growing in a tent it is a good idea that you just don't put a lot of you know, load-bearing weight on the thing, or at least try to avoid it as much as possible. But uh, in any case, guys, yeah, we got eight kryptonites that we have recently transplanted into seven-gallon pots, and there's really not that much to report from them, other than the fact that I've been noticing the uh, reservoir over here. Uh, I usually don't have to pH check it that often. We've been having really good luck with uh, stability in regards to pH, but I decided to jump in here and check it, and the pH came back at 4.7. I was like, oh my god. So uh, yeah, I decided to add some pH up, get that over 6.0, I uh, believe I introduced the uh, the next feeding at about 6.4 or 6.5 and this does kind of explain why the plants look a little bit less green than they should although still you know they don't seem to be complaining too much but that doesn't give me an excuse to just you know continuously feed them pH that's not on so we're going to displace this uh, uh, off pH with some higher than normal pH water and then I think on the next one we will go ahead and adjust it exactly where we want it which is generally about 5.8 to 6.0 which is a, a you know, pretty good range for plants that are being grown in cocoa. But uh, yeah, guys, we are going to be taking cuttings from these plants tomorrow. And after taking cuttings, I believe I'm also going to elevate these plants. There are uh, some people that have been watching the videos that uh, thought it would be a good idea for me to either put in the table or to use buckets to elevate. And uh, the table wouldn't work at this point because I think the plants are a little bit too large. Uh, the buckets actually are the best idea, and that's what I had planned to do. But I did want to save the set of buckets that I had to elevate the SFVOGs because once I take those things off tables after they're transplanted into 7-gallon pots, I will need buckets for them. And I don't know if I have another set on hand. If not, we'll have to get one. But uh, yeah, that's probably what we're going to do right after we take cuttings because uh, in any case, I'm not going to be transplanting the SFVs for at least another few days. But these plants are a little bit you know, of a priority since they are further along uh, being in their final 7-gallon pots, which is the last pots they're going to be in up until they are retired. But, you know, other than the little uh, pH debacle that we've had with these plants, everything else has been going really well. You know, we're going to take cuttings, continue to grow them out. After that, probably do some work on the uh, underneath area of these plants to kind of get them more in the mother shape. And then from then on, we're just going to make sure to, you know, inspect them always for insects, keep up the, uh, the spray down protocols in regards to our pesticides especially to make sure that what happened to the last set of kryptonite mothers does not happen to these plants. But, yeah, guys, you can see it's been looking really great, and that is pretty much it for this video update. So, as always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. Otherwise, if you have any questions or comments you want addressed in the live show, email those directly to me at sublbcqna at gmail.com. So, in our next video update, guys, we're going to be heading back over to the, uh, whatchamacallit, the Epic 4K, and then after that, doing a video update from the Epic Nursery before we get into the live show, which will be going down Sunday at 7. So, thanks a lot for watching guys as always, and I'll see you all next time.